What's up, guys? It's the end of the year. 2016 is coming to a close, which means it's time to do the uh, best games of 2016. Now, there's going to be a few stipulations to this rule. We're going to be going through a bunch of games in here. I'm going to try to go through as many as I can, but uh, make it too long for everybody. But a 26 game would be like this, a full copy game, not a minor DLC, there's expansion, um, it could be an example that could be allowed, it's like for example, um, I think I'm going to allow through here is like Rise of Iron or something like that, that, that DLC to me is okay-ish, we'll figure that out in a minute, but... We're going to put that through here, um, has to be a game from 2016, um... Has to be a major title. I can throw in here once in a while, guys, some small indie ones that are pretty big, but most of them are going to be AAA titles, big games, and stuff like that. Um, we're also going to put down through different categories fighting, racing, RPG, uh, first person shooter, uh, strategy. Um, I think I'm going to put down also, guys, best free game of 2016. Uh, we're also going to put in here also the most disappointing game and worst game. Disappointing would be for us guys a game that was a major hyped game but had flopped dramatically because of a disappointment for the crowd as it was not uh, give what it was expected to give. Um, worst game would be a AAA title that was just a flop altogether guys. A game that was doomed from the the start nothing else it's just a game that was doomed from the start to be ever created so for whatever you do guys let's get started with this and let's show you guys my top games of 2016 Okay, guys, here's the list of all the games I got here, right here, on my paperwork here, and uh, we're going to be going through these guys, and uh, the categories is they assume for best games of 2016, we have Adventure, First Person Shooter, um, Racing, uh, Street fight, uh, Fighting Games, uh, Strategy, those are all going to be put together in one big other category, because there is not many games for 2016, unfortunately, that we'll be able to put in one big shebang here. Um, most of them have been pushed back to 2017, unfortunately, so they won't be here. So I will not be able to give them a big enough title or section to give them a separate thing. So they will be in the other department. Uh, casual games, uh, we have um, most disappointing game of 2016, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to be in here. Um, and, of course, the worst, the worst games of 2016 will be in here. There's actually two in that category I could thought of on top of my head. So without further ado, let's start with the adventure games. Top five adventure games on top of the uh, market. So without further ado, let's show you guys number five in that list. Number 5 definitely goes to Ratchet and Clank on the PlayStation 4. It's definitely one of my favorite games. I've played a little bit of this thing. I haven't fully finished it yet, but it's definitely one of my top 5 of this year. Cinematics, storyline, everything was solidly built, and it's definitely one of those games that I'm willing to play over and over again from time to time. So definitely number 5 on my list. Dishonored 2 definitely has to take one of the top five this year. And I have to put it at number four. There's other games that are pretty good, but this one definitely kicks it and putty put beats the Ratchet and Clank just a slight bit. Storyline just continues right off where we left off with the first Dishonored, right after all that con the fighting and revelish actions. It's definitely a really, really solid game, and it just adds on to that extra kick that all this game really had definitely one of the top five this year and it's we looking to see what they do with this adding on to it so definitely a top five contender Three. 
number three is got to go to Watch Dogs 2. This game looks amazing. Oh my god, did they do a hell of a job on this game. It's all about the technology and this, this storyline over in San Francisco, but it's Lone Lone Wolf going after anti-government everything about your secret life and everything else fighting over tech and everything else about your business about helping defend the little man so to speak it's a hell of a game and I'm looking forward to playing definitely a lot of this game and everybody's definitely loving the hell out of this game for sure Ubisoft definitely slammed this one out of the ballpark for sure and it definitely takes the third spot for sure Naughty Dog comes back again with a new Uncharted 4 at Thief's End. Continuation on the game that we thought that they finished up on 3. But no, they found another one into this. And definitely, it takes the number 2 spot. Shockingly, Naughty Dog knocked this one out of the ballpark once again for a story that is just amazing. Definitely takes number 2 in our spotlight. One. It's only fitting that we have number one being Dark Souls 3. Holy crap, this game dark. Oh, but tell you what, is it an adventure game? It's definitely one of them up there for good. Holy chip, will it definitely easy be taking number one in my spotlight for sure. With its gameplay, its heavy action, its crazy difficulty, and badass action play, it definitely easily takes the number one clutch spot for sure in this, this countdown. Tell you what, if anybody who's going to be seeing this, this is the formula for great games. Okay guys, so that's the top five of adventure games. So let's now dice it up a bit and let's go a, a, a bit and uh, let's switch to casual games. These are games that uh, are more of like chilling out, playing, having some fun, enjoying the general community. You're not really having to focus really crazy in hardcore gameplay like an adventure game or a first person shooter or something like that. So here we go. Top five of uh, casual games. Prison Architect definitely takes fifth place in our list here of games for casual. Definitely a cool little game. Create your own prison in this world. Showing how to create your own little style in any shape or form. And maybe a full creative on what do you want to do. Just chick back, kill back, you know, sit back and chill. And create your own very own maximum security prison with the warden and everything. As you as the warden, you create your prison and manage the own maximum security prison. Golf with Friends definitely takes fourth place on our list here. This fun little game you get to create your own different golf balls in different terrains, shapes, sizes, gravity, even the different buff effects with all your friends playing around with just a good old fashioned of yelling and bickering about golf. <laughs> even though this sounds so weird, this game actually is a lot of fun for me. Not surprising, but Farming Simulating 2017 definitely takes my as my top third game for casual for this year. This game, even though it doesn't do much, is definitely a lot of fun. Create your own very farm with your bunch of your friends together, harvesting crops, selling them, moving them around, all kinds of different things, and you build and grow up on those fields. It sounds weird, but this game is a lot of fun and it's definitely worth the price. This will probably go with no surprise that number two for me goes to Stardew Valley. This game is a lot of fun for a lot of people. Create your own little farming little lace and just grow everything you are. Mine and everything, start from everything, live to learn off the land. And you get to do all kinds of community things. Live your life there at the farm and everything else. It's such a cool little fun little game that everybody loves, even though it's just this little quaintly little game, everybody loves it. And it's definitely, for my bet, it is definitely one of my top five in this game. And it's definitely going to take the second place for me for sure. 
and it's definitely one of the greatest. One. This will definitely go without saying that the Planet Coaster takes the number one spot for casual games this year. Holy crap, do I feel like I'm back in the time machine again when I was a kid playing Roller Coaster Tycoon 2 with good old Chris Sawyer's games. Now, Frontier has come back with a brand new roller coaster type game called Planet Coaster. Create your own very type roller coasters, theme park from everything from the ground up, scenery, track work, waterways, theme parks, you name it, everything you can build as you can see and menace and create everything on your own and what the kicker is and this is what you're gonna see right here you can share your content with your friends and family in the community and create a big diverse feel this game has everything and more and definitely still adding on to it they just added a new update for winter and it's just making the game better and better definitely takes number one for best casual game of 2016 Okay guys, so now we're going to get into a different category, where it's going to go to Other. I'm going to call this Other. This is games like racing, strategy, and uh, fighting games. Now I would put these separate from each other, but unfortunately these three categories themselves don't have enough games to, me to make them even do a top five. I think there's only like one fighting game that came out in 2016 that I can actually note in this list. So unfortunately I'm going to put these guys in the other section. That doesn't mean that these games are bad. Not at all. It just means that I don't have enough room to put these in a separate division here. So let's show you guys what I think of these top. I'm just going to mark them as not even a top five. Maybe these guys I'm going to mark as like, be, if there's one or two of them, I'll mark them as what they are as higher or lower from each other by when I speak of them first. But I'm just going to ramble right through these guys because there's no way I can really put them as a top five. So, without further ado, let's go through the others. Let's start with um, our fighting game that uh, we have to note this year for 2016. Street Fighter V is definitely one of the games we have to note this year. A brand new fighting game, that's all I'm all for that man. Just love fighting games, I've been playing them since I was a little kid, and I still will. Street Fighter V definitely comes back to us in a big bad way, the old school fighting and beating the living crap out of you and your friends and online. And they're still adding new characters. Hell, they just added new ones you can see for sure. And it's definitely one of those games that's definitely a crowd pleaser for all. Our next game we have to mark on our list is Trackmania Turbo. This is a newer, this is an update that has been around for needed for some time. Trackmania is a game that's really difficult for racers, but for the challengers out there, they are there. Racing with difficult tracks that have flips, turns, hills, climbs that you have to make sure you hit perfectly. You hit, you miss, you pretty much are starting brand back from the start. And boy, are they tough to do. So I'm glad Track Mini Turbo added the new. And don't forget, guys, you can create your own tracks as well and make them incredibly difficult for other people to play. However, that does not mean that this is not without having its competition. Forza Horizon 3, guys, is finally out for 2016 and definitely was the best for racing as far as I knew and definitely probably is going to be. Horizon definitely added more gameplay, more everything, just all around. This is a really fun racing game, really good, good to get your hands on and since the Windows 10's update you can also probably play this on the PC as well. But, you know, it, other than that, it's definitely a solid racing game, and definitely if you're looking for a great new racing game, pick yourselves up this one, because this one's definitely a crowd pleaser for you. Now off to strategy, and Total War unveiled the god of all games, Warcraft. Now as a Total War game, plays the vampires, the beast hunters, 
the humans, all different types of teams and enemies going out on your pilgrimages against either as the dark, evil, dark forces against the light, or the light beating it down against the darkness. This game has it all. It's an amazing game. I've, wa I've been wanting for this for a long time from the Total War series. Instead of them doing realistic type ones, to do a fantasy style Total War game. And they have not stopped. They definitely answered the call and brought a gigantically heavy hitter game home for us. And it's solid for sure. This course also doesn't go without saying, guys, of another game, Civilization VI has finally revealed its, uh, its beautiful golden face once again with a new update, new content, and a brand new game for us all. Even though Civilization V was a hell solid of a game, VI definitely kicks it up a notch and improves on a lot more of the gameplay. It's a very good game. If you love those kind of strategy type games, go pick yourselves up this solid game of Civilization series. If you're not too sure, you probably can get a good deal still on the old previous Civilization 5, but Civilization 6 is definitely one hell of a game, and I would it recommend it for sure if you get your hands and pick that up. Okay guys, so let's go now into another category. This will definitely be a top 5 because there are a lot of games in this category. This is going to be the best first person shooter game first person shooter games have been around for a very very long time they've been around since for a while long time since the dawns of halo and older games like cod and stuff like that and i'm talking about the old cods not the new ones i'm not talking about the new ones i'm talking about the old call of duties and stuff like that the old war games so there will be now a top five of first person shooters so let's get right into it Titanfall 2 definitely takes the top five in this game in the first-person shooter genre. The original Titanfall I had my hands on for some time, and I still enjoy it as a first-person shooter game. But now that they put Titanfall 2 out, they did increase the amount of gameplay in it. They increased and added a storyline to it and a whole other bunch of goodies to it. I haven't had a chance to go out and play this game, but still, it's one of those games that has always been a crowd pleaser of the original and had something to go for. But with now Titanfall 2 and adding all the extra bonus features, it definitely makes it a top 5 for my contenders. And I'm looking forward to seeing all the other content that they're going to add to the game. It's definitely been voted as one of the best games around for a first person shooter, but I think it still isn't there as fully as the number one spot. But it does take a top five, and for sure is one of those kind of games that you all will love. Microsoft has come again with Gears of War 4 as all hell breaks loose once again where everybody and their family has now once again has to get ready to strike and help defend their own home. Definitely a great looking game and definitely one of the greatest for shooting series. Still one of the pro games out there to play and definitely everybody loves the Gears of War franchise. Definitely top five and I'm going to give it number four in this on my list here. One of the best games for first person shooters. Definitely get your hands on this thing. It is one of the best out there and you'll love it all the hell. Third place, guys, definitely has to go to one of my favorite little games I love playing off and on. Doom. Holy crap! You get to play and go battle the hell demons of hell. Boy, is this game so much fun to play. Get your hands on this thing. It is a lot of fun. Battling all different types of different demons of the hell gates. Going after all kinds of demonic creatures. Going through all the campaigns. Trying to clear all the challenges, unlocking different kinds of weapons and special power-ups. And there's a multiplayer to boot. Pick it up, guys. You'll love it. It's one of those kind of games. Dive into hell with me and play Doom. Two. 
Overwatch takes my second pick as top game for first person shooters. It almost took first place, but there was another one that pushed it, you'll see later. But this game definitely takes the second on the cherry on the cake. This game's solid with the gameplay, action, and a lot of fun, and it's all in a little casual way. It's not too bloody, too hardcore, and it's a lot of fun to play. If you guys want a really good first person shooter to enjoy yourselves on, and don't have to pay a pretty penny to play, get your hands on Overwatch guys. You'll really enjoy the content that they've been adding by Blizzard. I hope you guys like it too. First place has to go to Battlefield 1 from DICE, guys. This game I was so anticipating when I heard about it that I had to pre-order and get my hands on it. I love the hell out of this game. One of my favorite first person shooters of 2016 and will be for some time for me to play. DICE hit this in the jackpot. Great campaign, great action, great storyline, story and all featuring World War I, the one of the most bloodiest wars of all time, only second to World War II, and they thought that this would be the war to end all. It still is one of the most terrifying wars of all time. Get your hands on Battlefield 1, guys. It is a lot of fun. Okay, guys, so that's all the games pretty much we got. We went through casual, we went through other, we went through first person shooter, we went through adventure. That's pretty much all the games. But there's one little, tiny little thing we forgot to talk about here. We forgot to talk about the flops, the bad, the nasty games. So unfortunately, I'm gonna give this, just like there's a thing called the Razzies, which are for worst movies, I'm gonna give these guys the, uh, the Raz put in the the dump box or something like that. Let's, let's call this, you know, I'm going to say it right now. Uh, let's put it in the shit bucket. That's basically what this is. These are games, guys, and I'm not even going to throw their trailers out here because they're so bad. Um, this is the, um, let's throw up for first two, is the most disappointing games of 2016. These are games that had great potential in my part and could have been a great game but unfortunately it just either the, wasn't the right game that people intended or just the game wasn't designed the way it should have been intended as something to that effect so first one guys has to go unfortunately to no man's sky i know there's a cult following for it and i'm definitely sure that there's a game for everybody in no man's sky there's a few people who enjoy it but people were promised a game of a open world where everybody can create some stuff and all kinds of other things part of my itch there um but it didn't perform where everybody was expecting they even had got hit with a lawsuit for fake propaganda it was proven but unfortunately it was such a bad game that people actually were complaining so bad that it actually flopped on them majorly unfortunately they're going to be in that mud for some time, and unfortunately, I have to give it in the bucket for that one. Second place is another one. This is even worse for me, is Atari, once again, destroying a classic game that I loved and deared from the first one to the second one, and then flopped on the third, and all others including. Roller Coaster Tycoon World. It has got to be the worst one of the worst, most disappointing games of 2016. This game had potential once again, but unfortunately, the game was doomed from the start. One, Chris Sawyer, the guy who used to originally make these two games, Roller Coaster Tycoon 1 and 2, they kicked him out of his butt out of it. Number two, Atari, having not having it have any help from Frontier or any other company working on the game making basically a game that was very limited source, very limited able to creation, very uh, un... It, it was just so bad. They're actually right now trying to sell it right now from what I was told from somebody else. They're trying to do a buy one, get one free. That's how desperate they are for people to buy this game. But unfortunately, it's not going to work for them on their part. Unfortunately, guys, I'm sorry, Atari, but I have to give you the thumbs down on that one. You need to sell the franchise and give it back to somebody else. Give it to Chris Sawyer again. 
give it back to the guy who created the game from the start and he'll get it back on the foundation because honestly you guys ever since you've worked into it you just have destroyed a game that was so good in my childhood and just send it back down into the depths of I hope never to play it ever again now it comes up to the last one the worst game 2016 it has to be the worst one unfortunately and I am not going to say because it's just I know it's unrecyclably bad there's also two in this category actually that these are games that again it could have potential but because they are basically reprints of previous games these two I'm speaking of um they're just terrible they have no brain I guess or something to that effect number one has to go to Call of Duty Infinite Warfare Again, another space shooting game. If I'm going to play a first-person shooter that has to personally go out in outer space, I'll play Titanfall, for God's sakes, or I'll play Star Wars Battlefront, even though the game doesn't even have any campaign. Honestly, if I wanted to do that, I'd pick those up. But no, you, you, Call of Duty, you were originally playing Black Ops and World War II and stuff like that. Go back to that. People will love you, again, if you just stick with those franchises, the Cold War, um, the World War One, World War Two, something that actually has a spec. Don't go into Imagineer Fairy Tale Land, honestly, because it's not really working for you. The second one has to go to Far Cry Primal. I personally think it was one of the worst games because, again, it was like Far Cry 4, reskinned, remapped, was reskinned, and repeat rinse and repeat I know that is a simple and easy quick way for companies to make money but you should improve it just a little more between the two there should be a certain leap between one and the other but they didn't do that I think and because of that I think it was a complete idiocracy stupid idea and it's just another flop in my perspective of a game definitely one of the one of the worst games of 2016 there are other ones out there i'm probably missing for worst games or there's probably some games you guys think was good for 2016 if you guys think and think of any other games you thought were good this year write them in the comments down below i'm i'm actually interested in seeing what you guys think was good for this year um you know this is always enough before for people who thinks their other games are better um but i'm gonna say this also um last thing I'm probably going to say here is what game do you think I was the best for 2016? What game I think is um, best overall? And I'm going to say this as general. Every game I talked about. Casual. Fighting. Strategy. Uh, racing. What game you think overall is the best enjoyment for my money for 2016? I have to give this to... And this is a weird one. Even though I just said it was second place to another game. I have to give it to Overwatch. Why? Because the game actually has a lot to go for. Blizzard actually is working really well with this game and allowing content people like anybody like me or anybody else out there have a really good way to expand upon it. They always add more characters. They said they're adding a lot more. They're adding more gameplay to it. They're expanding upon it and they're adding different cool tech techniques it's just an amazing idea like recently they said that they were going to do was have teams for different cities like philly san francisco san diego and have them fight each other like professional esports but like for football teams in a way i thought that was a kind of cool idea but we will see how that's implemented down in the future um but overwatch i think definitely has to um take the golden trophy so to speak here guys i mean congratulations to blizzard they also got game of the year this year and um it's no surprise the game has been a major hit for them and blizzard has been knocking it out of the park ever since with this game so um i wouldn't be surprised that uh they if they keep their process with it that it's going to be one of the best selling games um for them compared to the warcraft series um so that's it guys um write in the comments down below if you guys like um any other things down there if you guys like any other uh games do you think that could have been you know best for 2016 but um other than that guys 
I hope you guys enjoyed 2016. We let's look forward to 2017's games. Um, and as always, guys, take care of yourselves.